Therese, it's great to see you. Um, I always appreciate our time and I look forward to seeing you at the conference beginning yeah. December workforce hashtag workforce week in New York City. Um, but listen, we've got we're, at some point this week, we're going to get election results. Yes. And tell me. It's going to go one direction or another. Yeah. What does that mean for WIOA and how we as providers in this universe have to think about how we're going to react and respond because we always been a hot topic, but I'm not sure we all know what's going to happen next, but it could have consequences. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So first and foremost, thank you so much for having me as always oh, a pleasure. Secondly, just in case um, some of you viewers aren't sure, WIOA is the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, and it was introduced in Congress in 2013 and uh, authorized in 2014. And the idea is to have a broader effort to update and improve the workforce development system across the country. So prior to WIOA, there was WIA. So the WIOA is the idea behind promoting better alignment between education and training. So it includes upskilling, skilling, broadening resources to help the community. It goes to help dislocated workers, um, you know, youth, as well as older individuals, as well as local workforce development boards. For example, in New York State, we have 30 across. Oh, wait, wait, wait. And so for context, how much money are we talking about? Oh, millions, millions. And a large percentage of that goes to New York City. Again, there are different elements when it comes to the funding of WIOA. There is percentages. Some goes to the governor, meaning the administration. Some goes, but the whole point is to have local workforce funding. So the local workforce boards are really where we want the money as in our industry. We really want to see that the money go there. And 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 we've sort of in New York City, the Workforce Development Board kind of has been re-energized and updated. There's a Workforce Development Council. ETC has a role in the Workforce Development Council, which is serving as an advisory of the Workforce Development Board, which is very exciting. But that should yeah. all be about where, it, how it is that that money is being directed. And I think back of the envelope, the last conversation was it was a hundred million dollars. I think, if I understand correctly, in New York City. Yes, uh, and that's and definitely, and we have to fight for every dollar which is for the entire state and organizations, you know, like NIATEP, we are the statewide advocacy voice. So it's our job to go to DC and to talk with these representatives from, as you know, I like to say from Buffalo to Montauk. Mm -hmm. So right now, just to understand what is at stake at the election, right now, the reauthorization bill, which was introduced last December and passed the House and Education and Workforce Committee in December, has and it, then it passed this past spring in an overwhelming bipartisan vote of 378 to 26, which True is bipartisan. That's that's bipartisan. Yes. yes. Now, one of the things that that would uh, that would tell you, which is how you should, uh, you know, individuals should be energized after this election, is that despite having some really detrimental elements to that bill. It was broadly supported, including individuals who have had a background and really understood, but it was necessary to get it out of the House. Therefore, it received bipartisan support. The bill in the House lacked a lot of additional federal investment and in workforce development dollars. It also required a 50% training requirement for adult and dislocated worker funds and then increased the governor set aside. So already the governor administrations get up to 15% of what is allocated, taken off and put in a fund where they can spend it as they be. And this, the house, the, the house bill encouraged another additional 10%. And the so worry with that is that that's an additional layer that the governor has control over yes. that might not be related to the local needs. Again, ostensibly, a governor might say, yes, it's this is how it's, but that's that's putting it in a different, a percentage in different hands in terms of what should make the most sense in relation to what the bill was supposed to be about, which is about what are the local needs. Is that fair? Exactly. Yes. And that's the frustration, frustrating part about it is that though we, though, you know, there is support for more funding, there should be more funding at the bottom line then to take away from the local entities is just unfair and really goes completely against 
the whole point of the bill. So, and especially you could argue, we aren't always told where that additional 10% is, or additional 15% is going when it has been taken um, off the top. So and that's related to the worries about accountability that we have and the metrics and results that we have related to how it is that the dollars are being used. Gotcha. Okay. Absolutely. And especially, especially when the workforce boards are held to such a standard of regulation and reporting to have that much of a, a huge percentage taken from them when they're already potentially being, you know, defunded in a sense, you know, having less funding or having more restrictions. So the the House bill was really was really frustrating. And I'm, you know, proud to say that NIATEP was very strong. And we went down to DC multiple times to talk with House members about how dangerous that bill was. And, and as a result, we were actually able to have, you know, some of the concerns brought to the Senate and the Senate had a released a bill in June. Um, they released their version of the reauthorization draft. Now in the Senate, the committee is chaired by Bernie Sanders and then ranking member Bill Cassidy. So this was really being discussed at a staff level between the two, but the committee had their own staff that has been working on it. And there were things that were great in the Senate bill as well. They are still working on it. So we haven't seen an updated bill language since we saw it first introduced in June, but they were very open to input and language. They did you know, do a, it did not include a training requirement. So there was strong advocacy against that, which helped. We also were able, they were also able to add language with performance metrics related to training and services. They, it did, it did kind of have some troubling clunky redesignation proposal and it still did have a uh, administration designation. We don't know if that is going to go away but it did have a pilot program for block grants for up to four states. It did have population and local board thresholds for single board state designation. And it had did have a significant youth focus, which was coming from uh, Chairman Senator Sanders, which is, you know, no surprise. That's something that he's always big on. So the House has has something in place, which we've got some concerns and some reactions to. You're saying that the Senate is still cooking. Uh, yeah, give me yeah. 30 more seconds on when well, you flagged the training requirement. Tell me a little bit more about your concerns about the training requirement. Yeah, so putting the local workforce boards on having a training requirement for the adult and dislocated worker funds is really limiting the fund usage. And WIO is already so limiting to the local workforce boards. They can't really afford to do their jobs, have staff, and complete the requirements that are above an overhead that they have to accomplish by having more restrictions. Our so, NIATEP's solution was if you're going to insist on that, that requirement, then you have to redefine the definition of training. Uh, uh, That's why it's so important in this election after the results that every individual talk to their local representative and have them reach out to their congressional rep if you're not able to do that directly or if you don't feel comfortable because Congress and senators, your senators and your congressional reps need to understand how it's involved, especially if there's a significant because so much work has been done and so much effort has been made by different entities to explain these chapters. That if we're looking at a new, totally new Congress or a totally new Senate, we're going to have to start at the bottom again. Now, you could argue that maybe the reauthorization does not need to be rushed if these are the, this is what's going to happen. Because if that does, if it's not reauthorized, then what has been happening will just happen another year. There is no dramatic, you know, situation except for that it could hold it could potentially be it could hold up funding which again is not ideal so you know to your to your members and to your followers and to everyone make sure you track what's happening with this bill you can sign up on alerts on and also rely on us on NIATEP if you're not a member already please do or NYCETC and have updates on this bill because it is really critical and, and we owe a touch of so many different elements 
that it's critical that everyone talk to people who are in power, regardless of what party, even though I know it's sometimes hard, regardless of party, you have to advocate and use data and own experiences really help advocate for the funding and for a resolution, um, especially when two houses are so divided. Again, to recap, there's a reauthorization conversation happening. The House has something to cook. There are questions. There are, yeah, the they're, they're done. They've got there. The House has got there. Yes, That's they right. did their part. Yep, Virginia. They did their part. The, the Senate yep, is thinking and reflecting and trying to figure out. Right. 78 to 26. Got it. Senate is cooking, right? Senate's cooking, yes. We've got to come to some sort of understanding. Workforce development, by the way, huge topic. Legislators get excited about it. They get interested in it. They may not know exactly what it means or how it works. So it's incumbent upon us, NIATEP. It's incumbent upon NYCETC and our universe to tell them what makes the most sense, what can have the most impact. And I think we all believe it's about what's going on the ground and how we manage and support those particular investments that we know work for New Yorkers from Buffalo to Montauk. Yes, and use, and if you are working with your local workforce board or you're working with different entities that I mentioned, use data, use that in your advocating for the reauthorization or for changes that you might hear about. You know, get engaged, use data, meet with your electeds, use personal stories, you know, encourage those if you are involved and you receive WEO funding, encourage the individuals that you serve to tell their stories too, because we found that real life stories have a real life impact. I appreciate your time on this. Again, this week we will have a result or maybe it'll be later, later but we'll know one way or another what happens and how it happens. Uh, we may see flips in the House and Senate. We may not, who knows? It's well, This is all to be determined as this week progresses. Whatever the reaction is, whatever your response is to the results, when we know the results, know that workforce development matters and we're gonna have to keep pushing regardless of how things turn out for what it is that we know works, what it is makes sense for the communities uh, that we, in the counties that we work with day in and day out. Uh, we support you. We will be partnering with you. We always partner with NIATEP, ETC, and NIATEP to push an agenda that makes sense for us. Therese, it is always a pleasure to spend time with you. Greg, thank you so much for having me. Lots, lots, lots more to come. Thank you for doing this. Absolutely. Thanks.